And what I, what I really like in the book, you went through some of the work that's been done about mindfulness and outcome. And, and what I liked about it was it, it really put together kind of the, the lockstep and you, you talked about how your mindset is going to then, or your mindfulness is then going to set how you feel. About, well, you see here. Yeah. So yeah, let, the let effort me and then the make that clearer. Yeah. yeah. So lots of this work is based on uh, mind body unity. Now, uh, if we go back just a few decades, the medical world believed that it's nice if you're happy, but it's irrelevant to one's health. The only way you're going to get sick is the introduction of an antigen. Okay. Uh, now everybody knows that, well, psychology matters some. So they talk about mind body connection. I'm not talking about mind body connection. I'm talking about mind body unity. It is one thing. If you view it that way, then wherever you put the mind, you're necessarily putting the body. So we have a host of studies where we put the mind in strange places uh, to help make the case. So the first of these was the counterclockwise study. This is a famous study. Now, isn't that obnoxious to call one's own work yeah. important? No, it's not. Way. When you actually know, when you actually hear what she's well, doing, no, say, no, you, no, the it's reason... not obnoxious at all. It's actually really, really cool. Well, that's sweet, but no, but the reason I feel comfortable is because if you watch the Simpsons go to Havana, they talk about the study. So, so it's out there. You know, if the Simpsons think it's true, yeah, if you make the Simpsons, you're, you're, right. you're really yeah. You know, what we did was basically retrofit a retreat, a timeless retreat to 20 years earlier. And then we had elderly men live there for a week as if they were their younger selves. So they spoke about past events as if they were just unfolding and so on. Okay, one week or less, what we found was their hearing improved, their vision improved, their memory, their strength, and they looked noticeably younger, all without any medical intervention. So then we've gone on now to, to do many, many studies like this. Uh, the one you mentioned to me before we started to tape, um, I think you're interested in the chambermaid study. Yeah. So here... Chambermaids are exercising all day long, but they don't realize they're exercising. They think exercise is what the Surgeon General says it is, what you do after work. After work, they can't do anything. They're just too tired. So all we did was teach them, half of them, that their work is exercise. Making a bed is like working on this machine at the gym and so on. All right. They didn't eat any differently. The two groups, they weren't working any harder, less hard. They were the same on all the measures except those who changed their mindsets and now saw themselves as exercising, lost weight. There was a change in waist to hip ratio, body mass index, and their blood pressure came down. Okay, so now let's go further. We have so many of these. I'm just going to give a couple. Um, let me give you the, the most recent, which is fun. So we inflict a wound. Now, it would have been more dramatic if I could really hurt somebody, but I didn't want to. And even if I wanted <laughs> yeah, to, it wouldn't have been approved. hopefully, <laughs> right, hopefully the human subjects committee wouldn't let me. So, but it's a wound nonetheless. And a third of the people are in front of a clock that's rigged, which unbeknownst to them. And it's going twice as fast as real time. Another group is in front of a clock that's going half as fast as real time. And for the last group, the clock is reporting real time. And the question we're asking is, would that wound, will that wound heal based on, quote, real time or perceived clock time? And the answer was clock time. We have people in sleep labs where we, they wake up, they think they got two hours more sleep than they got, two hours fewer, or the amount that they got. Again, biological and cognitive functioning follow perceived amount of sleep. We have work on fatigue that's relevant to uh, your line of work. It's kind of yeah. fun. Uh, I, I won't go through all the studies. Let me just uh, give an example of um, a pilot work we did here. But it all says the same thing. So we asked 100 people to do jumping jacks. Tell us when you get tired. So they tend to get tired around 70. Now we take another group of people and we say do 200 jumping jacks. They get tired at 140. All right. And you have, you know, the image that I have is somebody word processing all day and, you know, their back hurts and their fingers hurt. And then the, uh, the work day is over. They go home and they play the piano, <laughs> you know, which is essentially the same thing, but within a different context. And so uh, that's something that we can do for ourselves is to change the context and then you get renewed energy.